This is a gearbox that uses magnets instead of gears. It basically feels like magic. We could call this system a magnetic planetary gear transmission. And it has three major components. This is the primary magnetic rotor. It has four powerful neodymium magnets and they're placed in alternating polarity. Next, we have what's called the magnetic flux modulator. It uses ferromagnetic bolts to help direct the magnetic fields. And ferromagnetic is just a fancy way of saying that the material is strongly attracted to magnets. And the last component we have is the secondary magnetic rotor. This one has 12 magnets of alternating polarity. To design this apparatus, I used Fusion 360. And I even tried some design tricks to help make placing the magnets into the discs easier. The cutouts allow the first three magnets to go in super easily. And of course, I had to be careful to remember to put the magnets in the correct orientation. But how do we know how many magnets to use for each stator and how many nuts and bolts to use for the rotor? It's actually a really easy formula. All you do is you take the number of magnets for the primary rotor, in this case four, you add it to the number of magnets for the secondary rotor, and you divide it by two to get the number of modulator poles. So here we have our four primary magnets, our eight stator poles, and our 12 secondary magnets. And the cool thing is by changing the number of magnets and nuts and bolts, we could actually change the gear ratio. Here I've marked the primary and secondary motors so we could count the rotation. So here we go. This is one rotation, keep going here. Two rotations, and they should line up here on the third. And there's three rotations and they line up perfectly. And we could even do it in reverse. So if I spin this one one time, the copper gear will spin three times. So that's one, that's two. If I keep going, they should line up here. And there we go, we have a full rotation on the red gear and three rotations on the copper gear. Originally when I designed this, I made a stand for everything to be mounted onto. But then I realized a cool feature of everything being magnetic. It holds itself together because of the magnetism. This makes it perfect for demonstrating one of the coolest features of planetary gear sets. And that's that planetary gear sets basically have six gear ratios in one. It all depends on which gear I lock or hold in place. In this scenario, I'm driving the copper gear, which is causing a gear reduction for the blue gear. Now, if I reverse it and drive it with the blue gear, it results in a higher speed for the copper gear. Now let's go ahead and lock the blue gear. The red gear becomes the drive gear, spinning the copper gear faster in the opposite direction, and if I do the copper gear as a drive gear, it spins the red gear slower in the opposite direction. And for the last situations we have holding the copper gear, driving with the red or driving with the blue. This is a much smaller ratio between these two gears. So in total, this system has six gear ratios in one. If you really wanna dig into the details and see all of the exact gear ratios, check out this table here. And the table automatically updates when you change the number of magnets on each gear. But it still doesn't answer exactly how the gears actually work. How are they meshed together when they're not touching? Basically, we have this big magnet with its field directed through the bolt, attracting the small magnet. Now, before we spin it, also watch this big gear, the bolt, and this small magnet. It's really subtle, so watch carefully. Now, did you catch that? Now, these three are aligned. Let's watch it again in slow motion. This big and small magnet are currently pulling towards each other. And this big magnet, with its field directed through the bolt, is pulling the small magnet closer, causing the red gear to rotate ever so slightly. And this is basically how we have a three to one reduction. So basically we have the aligned and the ones that want to be aligned. And here you can see it just keeps repeating. Pretty crazy, right? The main drawback of these mechanically mesh gears is that they can't really handle much torque. But actually, is this a drawback or is it a feature? Some wind turbines actually use magnetic gearboxes. No mechanical contact means less wear and maintenance, and it has inherent overload protection. So who would have thought that magnetic gears could be so cool?